All right. So here we go. Yes, I am. So this planet of mass, whatever, and radius, whatever, and you shoot a projectile straight up with an initial velocity of 5,000 meters per second. So the question is, what is the maximum height uh, that it goes away from the, or above the surface of the planet? So, I mean, unless I'm, unless I'm not seeing something, it seems like you could just do the potential energy equals the kinetic energy. And, but you just have to consider that it had potential energy to begin with. Yes, does that make sense? Right, because it's not at the center of the planet. You know, like two things, if they're point masses and they're dimensionless and they're next to each other, then like potential energy is like infinite, right? But as you separate them apart, right, then they have lower potential energy. So basically it's kind of like, I guess you could say the delta PE is gonna equal the KE, right? And then so that's gonna be, um, I don't know, whatever, the difference between the two. So the PE, what, big G, uh, M E M one over um, R and then minus big G M E M one over R plus H and that's going to equal one half M one V zero squared. So that allows me to cancel out all the M ones. So I'm thinking that should something like that should work. Do you see the difference between the two? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. How come it's not like a 2D motion problem? Because when it can gravity force the object to go back down? Uh, yes, it will. The issue is, what is the gravitational pull of this planet? Uh, and second, so I guess what you could do is you could calculate it. But also the problem is that um, what we're discovering now, when we do a 2D motion problem in general, we were under the assumption that gravity is always constant. Mm -hmm. But that's the issue now. Gravity is not constant. Oh, so it's not a 2D motion problem. Yeah, that's why, that's why we're using energy instead of, like, acceleration, right? Because do you see that I could use this information to calculate the acceleration of gravity on the surface of this planet? Um, I could also calculate the acceleration of gravity at some point, whatever, I don't know, 1,000, for example, 1,000 kilometers up if I wanted to. Right? But that value is changing the whole way up. So then you'd have to, you'd have to create a function to describe that, ex that acceleration and then integrate that function from whatever to whatever. To whatever. So it's easier just to use energy. Yeah. Would you get R plus H? Uh, where'd I get? Oh, because that H is at some height up there. I, th I think potential energy is, is not squared on the bottom. Oh, okay. That could be mistaken, but I think it's not. Yeah. So for the first gravity, uh -huh. um, is, that, is that like the initial? Or is that yeah, that's like the initial. Why is it the initial minus final, not that like final minus final? Or does it not matter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it has less potential energy at the end. Look at, look at the equation, right? Yeah. So I'm just taking the bigger one minus the smaller one. I could take the small one minus the big one, whatever. Or you could, or you could say they're both negative. So that means this becomes a positive. So there you go. Because the equation's negative, right? Technically. So I, I guess I could, I should have put that, and then that's what I think. Right? Because clearly the potential energy that it had here is more than the potential energy it has out there. See, the problem is we're all very fixated in thinking of the surface of the Earth as zero. So when we think of potential energy, we think of how high are you above the surface. But when you start taking your eyes off the surface of the Earth as your frame, which is very hard, then you have to ask, well, now what's my reference frame? The universal law of gravitation for potential energy uses infinity as your reference frame. Zero is out there. And then as it comes closer, <coughs> then you become more, like, you get more. Um, as it comes closer to Earth, yeah. Yeah. 
See, normally we think zeros here, and as you go that way, you get bigger. But when you're using, that's because we're using this, the Earth as reference. And we're not even using the center of the Earth, we're using the surface of the Earth. So we have to adjust our frame accordingly, and that's why the potential energy equation is negative, because zero is out there, it's not here. But, so if we do this, we should get, we should be able to solve out H at some point. Honestly, the easiest way would be to plug in the things because then this becomes a number and this becomes a number. And then you have a, everything's a number except for H. But I mean, if I was going to do it the right way, I guess I'd say uh, V0 squared over 2 um, plus big G mass of the, oops, I should put planet, but sorry. I put E, that's not <laughs> Earth. It was a you know force of habit. R is equal to big G uh, I guess I should call that MP, sorry. Uh, MP uh, over R plus H. And then now I can flip it and say R plus H is equal to V0 squared over 2 plus big G MP over R. Um, oh, crap. I should have put that on the bottom. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> So if I flip it, I should have big G MP here and then V0 squared over 2 plus big G MP over R. And then now I can just subtract an R from both sides. Like I said, <laughs> if you turn this into a number and then just add it to this side, then you get a number equals this jazz. Right, and then you can just flip the number. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, if you treat all of this as one number, then you can flip the R plus H with that number, divide G, M sub P by that number, and then add R to both sides, and you should get your answer. So, I don't know, do that, what do you get? Some, something. Some giant nasty business. It is nasty. Okay, <clears throat> so if I take 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the planet, which is 2.6 times 10 to the 24, divided by uh, V0, which is 5,000 squared over 2 plus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times... 2.6 times 10 to the 24th divided by 5 times 10 to the 6th. Close that parentheses. And then I'm now I should be able to, okay, if I do that one. Now let me just go ahead and do subtract R, which is 5 times 10 to the 6th. And I get 1.5. 3, 2 times 10 to the 6 meters. Really? Yeah, I got a negative number, but that makes sense based on what we were doing. I got a different number than my calculation. Oh, what'd you get? I got like, like 1.6 times 10 to the 6 power. I can't tell. Okay, let me see. Let me adjust something here and see if this works. Yeah. I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, the idea is the same. It's use the conservation of energy. So the change in potential energy uh, should equal the kinetic. Questions? Okay, hopefully you can see why you can't just find A and then use MGH, right? That doesn't work. Well, let's see. It's 41. What was the answer in the book? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. How do you get 2.82 times 10 to the 6? How do you get 2.82 times 10 to the 6? Well, and at least our number is within, like, it's on the right track. Let me check, see if I didn't type something in. 6 10 minus 11 times 2.6 times 10 to the 24. 
divided by 5,000 squared divided by 2 plus 6.67 times 10 minus 11 times 2.6 and 24 divided by 5.6 minus 5.6. Hmm. Okay, well, let me see. I can look up I can look up a solution thingy. A confusing solution. Yeah. Uh, this is chapter twelve. Oh, come on, jeez, what is going on? And that's number what? 41. Oh. See if I can see enough to just do this. One half MB squared. Huh? Didn't they say it stops? Like, you want to find out how high it goes, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. They plugged in zero later, so that's fine. <coughs> Big G, MG over R plus Y. That's interesting. Because it's the same, it's the same maths. the other day for saying homeworks. What? Somebody, somebody said, it bothers me when you say homeworks. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to destroy your... Okay. All right. So, um, if we take a look, energy conservation. Oh, okay. I mean, that they did that, right? They said the kinetic energy initial is going to equal the difference in the potential, right? That's what they did. Uh, they just put this one like there. So we can move it over here. It's the same one. Well, these are okay. Yeah, this is out. This is out there. So then it's like this minus that. But this this fin um, final becomes zero, right? Yeah. This is this is gonna. Well, this I'm assuming that's initial because the V zero. So this is the initial kinetic energy plus the potential energy at the surface of the planet. <laughs> and, and then this is the, the potential energy at some distance in space plus the, uh, or whatever, the kinetic energy. Um, these, of course, are both minuses. And then all I did was I took this and subtracted it from that one. So how did they get this to look so neat instantly? That's annoying. <laughs> But I mean, this looks neater than what I did. Did they just isolate, isolate my one? I mean, I mean, obviously, obviously they canceled out the M's. Huh? Oh, yeah, I guess we could. Okay, so obviously they canceled out the M's here, 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 and there. <coughs> and then it looks like they multiplied everything by two. And then, of course, this was zero, so that's easy. <laughs> Two 
I mean, it's basically the same thing. Look. I mean, it's exactly the same thing. This, it's just what they did is there's a two up here, see? The two up there gets rid of the two down there. I mean, because what I would have done here is I would have just taken this whole thing, what I did, and I swapped it with this on the bottom. Right? And so that, that put this all down there in the denominator, and then I just subtracted the R from that side. And that's exactly what I did. I took that jazz. They just multiplied everything by 2 to get 2 here and a 2 here, and then flipped it. So I'm not sure why, like whatever, some calculation thing, I guess. But how does this look so simple compared to? Oh, I get what they did. Yeah, they put both sides to negative one. Yeah. So they, they just flipped the entire thing and then subtracted the R. But what, I don't, what I don't get is like, if they flip this, what? What did they do with the bottom? They still have a bottom. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, my, my question to you at this moment is, does this logic make sense? Yes. Right, all it was was me saying, well, I know the difference in potential has to equal the kinetic. That's it. And then you go through. They're, I don't know how they, they, they got some magic. They use some magic calculator. Yeah. Yeah, that's zero. That's the Listen up, please. Um, well, if you do it this way, like, because I, I said it's difference, right? Difference requires subtraction. Now, their way came out the same way, where they said, what is the total energy on the planet's surface? What is the total energy up there? But then when you solve for the height up there, it's the, it becomes the exact same equation. So either way you want to do it. I think of difference, if you want to just say on the surface, right? If you want to go like right here. Um, right here, is like some KE initial plus PE initial, and then up there is some KE final plus PE final, right? But that goes away, right? Because it stops before it comes back down. So then they're just setting these two equal to each other. And all I did was I went the next step, or I, I, I looked at it by, you know, instead of saying this, I said KE equals delta PE. So, yeah. Oh, so this is just a calculation error. Yay, good. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jennifer. I don't know. She found it, not me. <laughs> so I just plugged something in wrong when I was doing this. But it's the right answer. All right, for part B, good God, that took forever. Um, for part B, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. It's just now you know H. You get what I'm saying here? And what I would do is, you know, you can just go ahead, let's just go ahead and use their technique. I'm just going to say KE initial plus PE initial, which is no different than what we already did, is going to equal KE final plus PE final. And now, in this, we know that H is 1, one times 10 to the 6th meters. No, 5th. Jeez. Yes? Does that make sense? We know that H is 1 times 10 to the 5th meters. <coughs> right. So we know that that part is going to go something like this. Uh, again, I'll write it so you can see what we did. KEI plus, not equals, uh, PEI equals KEF plus... PEF. Now, last time we were able to cancel KEF, right? But this time we can't. We're looking for that. 
So I've got one half m uh, v zero squared minus big G m m p over r equals uh, one half m v final squared minus big G m m p over r plus h. And the key here is we know h now. So again, I cancel all of my little m's. Right, if you want to do what the book did, we can put a two, if you want to do that. Because we're looking for this V final, why not? So make life easy for us. So VF is going to be equal to the square root of V0 squared minus 2G MP over R plus 2G MP over R plus H. All right, that one's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just forgot to use a negative when I did the one in the beginning. But, I mean, I put it in, well, yeah, once I, I realized that. Um, I would say, I would say use, hmm. see, the, it depends on, like, how you're looking at your frame of everything. But I would say, yeah, use the negative. It's better, safer. So just use the classic thing. And if you've had me before, you know what this is. If you haven't, just look at the wisdom of this, right? That statement is always true, right? Unless there's like WF. But I mean, obviously, when we're talking about planets and stuff, it's always true. Because you don't worry about friction, right? Because they don't have the atmospheres or whatever. So it, it, just using this, this was the basis of that problem. And that's enough time spent. Good gravy. Use the whole class. One problem. <laughs>